Proxies, what are proxies? Well, I've learned that some of you out there still aren't using them in Premiere Pro, but are wanting to. So I'm making this video to get you going with proxies so you can start saving time in your editing. So you're editing 4K footage or higher in Premiere Pro, but it stutters and it lags and every time you scrub through it just keeps hanging up. But you've heard there's something called proxies that can help you. Well, what is it? How much do I have to learn and how much does it help? Okay, well, proxies are a low resolution version of your higher resolution footage that attaches to your footage so you can work with the low resolution, but it will render the high resolution. It's easy to learn. Once you do it a couple of times, you'll have it down. How much does it help? A lot. It's the difference between being able to edit large files efficiently or suffering through all the lag. As cameras continue to get higher and higher in resolution, we need proxies so our computer can handle the workflow of four, six, and even 8K resolutions. I know there's some people out there that have been wanting to learn proxies but just keep putting it off. Well, now's the time, so let's go. Do it, do it. I'm going to show you two ways to use proxies with Premiere Pro. The first method will be by using ingest settings, which will have Premiere automatically create and attach a proxy to all footage you import. The second method I'll show you is how to pick and choose specific clips from your project to create and attach proxies to while leaving all the other clips alone. Let's get started with the ingest settings version. First, let's open up Premiere Pro and create a project. Before you import any of your video footage, go to the file drop down at the top, go to project settings, and then to ingest settings. Click ingest, then in the drop down, select create proxies. Mine defaults to H.264 low resolution proxy, and I've used it several times with no issues, but QuickTime is a little faster for the program to read, so it's usually suggested to use ProRes for a little more speed. There's ProRes low resolution proxy and ProRes medium resolution proxy, and they are both QuickTime ProRes 422 proxy files. It's just that the medium is just a little bit higher resolution. My computer's pretty fast, so I can use either one with no problem, but if medium is a little sluggish for you, then try low res. The last thing I wanna do in this window is to choose my proxy destinations. You can use same as project, and all of the created proxies will be in the project folder. If you're going to be saving your Premiere Pro project to a different computer or transferring it, you might wanna use that so that your proxies will all be moved with the rest of the files. But I am working on this project from always the same computer. So I have a dedicated folder for all of my proxies. I created it on a hard drive that comes with my computer, not one that I attached through USB. I feel that this will make Premiere able to read the proxies at the highest speed possible, which is what this is all about. So I click choose location and choose my folder called proxies and click OK. Now I'm ready to import some footage. I have three clips I want to import, so I grab those and drag them into my project window. You'll see that Adobe Media Encoder will automatically open and begin creating a proxy for each clip. This might take a while depending on how many clips you have and how long they are, so you might want to do something else while Media Encoder finishes creating your proxies. You'll see that there's a button called Toggle Proxies that you can use to click your proxies on and off. If this button is not visible, then click the plus sign and find this symbol, which is the Toggle Proxies button. You just grab it and drag it down into the other buttons and click OK. So now I can drag my footage into a sequence timeline. With my Toggle Proxies button unhighlighted, my footage is sluggish and glitchy to scrub through. It's 4K footage and this would take forever to edit, having to constantly wait for the computer to catch up and show me what I want to see but if I toggle proxies on the scrubbing is perfect no lag and I can instantly see the image that my playhead is over your footage will always export at the higher quality whether you have proxies turned on or off so don't worry about that the proxies are just for faster workflow they won't get exported that way so once again without proxies it's just so slow to work with and there's just too much waiting but with proxies turned on it's smooth Okay, you might need to turn off your ingest settings after your footage is imported. I have a folder full of pre-made transitions that I use and there's no use in creating proxies for them. In fact, it just puts Media Encoder to work converting 1400 files that I don't need to convert. So if you're importing footage that you don't want proxies for, go back to File, 
project settings, ingest settings, and uncheck ingest. Now footage will import without creating any proxies. Okay, so my footage is in my timeline and my proxies are attached and ready to use. I can add something like Lumetri Color and play with the settings. I can even adjust the settings quite a bit and still scrub through the footage smoothly when I have proxies enabled. I can even add like a Gaussian blur and it will still scrub through smoothly. If I turn off the proxies, it's back to slow and sluggish, but when I turn it back on, it's a thing of beauty. My computer is pretty fast, so maybe it won't be quite as good for slower computers when adding effects, but it seems to perform pretty well. Now I'm going to show you the second method that I use for proxies, when I only want to create proxies for certain video files. I do not have the ingest settings turned on, and I'm going to import a new piece of footage. As you can see, when I import it, Media Encoder doesn't do anything with it. I drop the new piece of footage into my timeline and the scrub function is laggy. There's no proxy attached. So I'm having to work with the full resolution no matter how Toggle Proxies is set. So to create a proxy for this one video clip, go to your project folder and right click the clip. In the drop down menu, select proxy and then create proxies. If you already have a proxy created, you can choose attach proxy, but in this case, we're creating a new one. In the window, we select QuickTime, then select ProRes Low Resolution Proxy or ProRes Medium Resolution Proxy. You might be saying, but Shane, why not ProRes High Resolution Proxy? And my answer is, I don't know, try it. For my computer, it's kind of pushing the limits of full speed, so I stick to medium or low. Next, you will choose the proxy destination. And as I said before, if you need to copy or move your Premiere Pro project files, you might want the proxies in there. But for me, I use my folder dedicated to all the proxies that I make. I click OK, and the media encoder begins making the proxy that will automatically be attached. When it finishes, I can see now that my clip will scrub smoothly when proxies are turned on. If we look at the difference between on and off, you can see that the proxies are lower resolution. How low will depend on how you chose your proxy. But if you need to see full resolution, just toggle proxies off and take a look. And then when you're ready to edit some more, turn proxies back on. You don't have to create proxies for only one clip at a time with this method either. You can go to your footage and control click several clips, then go to proxy, create proxies, and do the same thing. This time, it will make and attach proxies to every clip you had selected. So that's my method for working with proxies in Premiere Pro. I did a lot of projects before I learned about proxies, but once I started with them, I could never go back. I'm five to 10 times faster by using them. But that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. I hope that you're getting enough out of these videos to decide to subscribe. There should be a button close by that will get that done for you. I have a lot of other videos about filmmaking coming up and a lot of VFX tutorials. Those are some of our favorites to make. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.